As cities continue to innovate and explore how new technologies and best practices can help their cities adapt and transform for the digital age, the ability to test new solutions before deploying them in the public domain is an essential part of the innovation process. To meet this challenge, the City of Ottawa, in partnership with its Economic Development Agency, have developed a start-of-the-art facility that offers the ability to evaluate new technology in a secure and private test facility before implementation on the public infrastructure. It's called Area XO. I would like to invite Omar Shudri, Transportation System Manager, Management, sorry, project lead for the city of Ottawa. Hello, Omar. Hi, how are you, Ravi? Nice to join I'm you. I'm good, yourself? Very well, thank you. So the stage is now yours. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate the opportunity. Bonjour, merci pour l'opportunité de parler avec vous aujourd'hui. Uh, this is really uh, an exciting thing that's been happening over the last um, probably about two years now here at the City of Ottawa. We've been working a, uh, a, lo a lot at do doing different things. What I'd like to talk about is provide at the start uh, a little bit of background and some context about Ottawa. So uh, population-wise, we're about in 1 million uh, people here in Ottawa and then another 300,000 or so uh, just across the river on the Quebec side. Uh, we are a very large geographic region. Um, actually, you can fit the proper city of Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Edmonton, and Calgary within our borders and still have a little bit of room left over. But what most people don't actually realize is that we're also 80% rural. Uh, so we have a very large farming com uh, contingency and, and community within our borders of the city act and the city proper. So we're not just a government town. Um, but for the last 30 years, the city of Ottawa has been known as a tech hub. And uh, we have more than 1,800 ICT or information communications and technology companies that are based here in Ottawa with expertise in, in network, security, cloud, mobile, machine learning, and others. We, we do have government. Uh, we have regulators and policy uh, makers from organizations like Transport Canada, the National Research Council, and, D and Department of Defense. Uh, but we also have 130 embassies and consulates, uh, which provide us an opportunity to reach out to and attract international firms, as well as to be able to bring investments into our community. And so, uh, as Ravi was mentioning, you know, both the city and our independent uh, organization called Invest Ottawa we're looking at what ex exactly we could do. Um, and my space is on the traffic services side of things, but as they were uh, scanning the industry and scanning what we do here in the city, they looked at some of the opportunities. And one of the things that kind of came out was we have over 90 companies and organizations, and this was actually two years ago, so there's probably more, uh, that have been working in and or are connected in some way, shape or form to the autonomous vehicle and ecosystem. And so as we were looking at the strengths, uh, the competitive advantages within the city, there was there started to become a groundswell and, and an opportunity was identified where we could actually bring our public sector, our private sector, um, as well as the uh, research and universities here in Ottawa um, and take advantage of some unused um, federal agricultural research lands to create what we what we today call area X .O. Um, so on the map you see here, it's a uh, 1,800 acres, and you're only seeing the top half of it um, that has been developed thus far. There's still a lot more to do, go. With over 16 kilometers of paved roads, we have the latest in 4G LTE, and actually with our partners, uh, Nokia and Ericsson, uh, coming right out of their research labs, we're testing bleeding edge 5G devices. Um, the the facility also is has been a uh, test lo test location for the SpaceX Starlink satellite uh, internet communi uh, communications, and probably more interesting than anything else is that this is actually only 10 kilometers from Parliament Hill, so it's very central. Uh, provides op opportunities for anybody to be able to get to the location and to be able to take advantage of. When we zoom in on just, for example, the, the suburban area, which is the area in green that's been most uh, focused on and developed of late, um, 
what you'll see is that it provides a range of different opportunities. We have two traffic, uh, traffic uh, signals that are actually connected to the city's network. So we can, from our traffic control operation center, change and, and adjust the traffic signals. We have bike lanes, um, one-way and two-way roads, uh, pedestrian crosswalks, all of this up to, up to code and up to standard as to what we would have here at the city on, in the public domain. Um, and one of the things that you don't see there is just actually about two weeks ago now, we, um, we suddenly deployed a level rail crossing. We're, on, we're currently undergoing uh, an implementation of our light rail transit system. And uh, the LRT had some facilities that we could take. So we've actually used fully gates, uh, rails in the road and so forth, and being able to deploy uh, for testing vehicles, um, communicating and working with the, uh, with the level rail crossing. And, and the nice thing about the facility, as I said, it was gated, it's protected, um, access controlled is that companies such as BlackBerry, QNX, startups and so forth, they're able to come and test in a controlled environment uh, any of their technologies and be able to use the, use the facilities that we have here, but also use it for being, uh, being able to come and demonstrate to the technology to potential clients in an in a easy, easy to go manner. Um, and so we have been taking advantage of the idea that we can bring in all the infrastructure necessary and use it and, and share it amongst uh, organizations and startups and, and businesses that are interested in this area. So we have a couple of um, uh, self-driving uh, automated shuttles and pods. Uh, we have technology such as these mannequins that you, that you see, um, child, the person on a bike, um, that are on these skateboards that can be pulled across in front of a vehicle to test whether or not the technology is catching and identifying it. And through some a recent project, actually, um, they've, they've deployed Canadian geese on that just to be able to see whether or not um, the, the devices will be able to get that. And all of the uh, information is controlled and managed through our um, advanced uh, command center that has eyes uh, on the entire facility so we can actually view through cameras everything that's going on and um, through this they are actually also deploying and and can remotely control drones from within the center but it isn't only the ability to test in a in a private uh, in a private facility so uh, we've slowly been rolling out now um, the ability to test in a, in a real world environment. So part of uh, in the in the west end of Ottawa, we have uh, the Canada North Business Park, which is the largest uh, tech park in North America. There's over nine kilometers of roadway, and so we are slowly deploying and and making available that those facilities. So once a uh, startup or a company has tested and been been able to validate their technology in the private uh, controlled access location, we're able to then bring them and, and bring them forward into the live environment. And that includes uh, commissioning of, of uh, that's undergoing uh, right now is our smart intersection. So that'll have the latest and greatest of technologies. It also allows uh, small businesses and startups to actually connect to our infrastructure or to, to, to the um, a very heavily controlled intersection. Um, and be able to test their, their wares on a real life environment. All of that information is gonna be sent back over 5G back to the headquarters over at the private test track. So everything can be actually accumulated and, and shared on the cloud. There's a number of things that sort of kind of so get uh, associated with that. Um, and so, you know, as we're working through what we've been, what we've been developing, um, there's a number of different uh, key policies and key areas that we want to address. So with Ottawa, we get snow, we get 30 degree cent, uh, minus and up to 30 degree positive temperatures. So we have a wide range of temperature changes that you can't actually test in Arizona and California and so forth. We're looking at being able to test and, de and assist with companies to be able to detect hidden objects whether it's people or metal, metal uh, underneath snow banks and so forth. Um, 
Cybersecurity, obviously, we want to make sure any of the devices that we're deployed, whether it's in the field for the infrastructure side of things or for the autonomous and automated vehicles, to be able to ensure that they're secure and protected. Um, we also then, for example, we want to make sure that any of the startups and, and organizations that come in and start working with us are being able to get access to our staff at the city to be able to provide them some guidance and so forth. So it's it's one thing to be able to develop something, but actually being able to ensure that your technologies are able to be deployed and be accepted by those field technicians and others that are going to be actually deploying and using the, the technology in the field is very important. Uh, a, a, a very simple example would be, you know, uh, the request that I need 120 volt uh, power access at an intersection. Usually you're not going to get that, but if the companies are able to understand that you know power over internet and there's other sort of uh, kind of D 12 volt DC, for example, uh, access and power available, that they can actually make sure that they're designing their technologies to be able to be well accepted by industry as they go out to start selling. And finally, on the on the uh, one of the I guess bigger areas is on the communication side of things. Uh, as I said, we have a number of different organizations that are working in, in this field. And so, you know, things like the vehicle to vehicle, um, cars talking to each other to tell them where they're going, where where they are in their position. The vehicle to infrastructure, so that is the car telling the infrastructure, the traffic lights and so forth, what it's doing and where it's going, as well as the infrastructure to tell back to the vehicle, this is what the status of the, of the traffic light is. Make sure that you're slowing down because you're not gonna make it based on where you are. And then ultimately it's the vehicle to the entire network. So it's a V2X or vehicle to everything. And all of this, you know, we it's only been about two years, for example, two and a half years, I guess I'll say that uh, since we actually first started really launching this and we've been able to achieve a significant amount of success. Uh, there's over $27 million worth of uh, investment that has gone on into that, in, into our facility so far. and a lot of that is because we have a solid partnership between the public sector, the private sector, the university and research groups that are actually interested. And, and maybe more than anything else for organizations and, and communities that are looking to, to move forward on building them, their, their own uh, hub, whether it's for smart cities or for, for other sort of areas, is that by this kind of partnership, we don't actually have a single champion. I'm sure many of you have seen uh, instances where a project or an initiative gets started and whoever it is that that champion either retires or moves on to a new position and the thing fizzles. And because we have so many organizations, as you can see there, we have Invest Ottawa, the uh, province of Ontario, the federal government, Accenture and Microsoft and Nokia and, and BlackBerry, and then our local universities that there isn't just a single champion. And so what we're able to do is make sure that everyone is driving this, this ship forward, so to speak. Um, and equal to that is we focused from day one on what Ottawa does well. You know, the Southern Ontario, their manufacturing hub, the, you know, the OEMs uh, for GM and Toyota, Honda and so forth, and all the parts manufacturers are there. We don't have a manufacturing hub, so we're not going to try to do something or try to be something that we're not. And so all of this and all of our work has really been built on the existing foundation that we have, the technologies, the, uh, the organizations and the companies that are here based in the city and the expertise that we have through our universities and so forth to be able to engage people from, you know, a first year or second year university student all the way through PhD. Um, that are working on these areas and are interested. And we can leverage that, those research dollars as well to kind of continue to drive. So I'm not sure, but I think I'm just getting close to the end of my time. But I'm gonna throw up a, a quick slide and I have a one minute video. So I will quickly just stop sharing uh, here. And then if I give me just one moment, uh, my Chrome tab. So you should hopefully see that. Let me go to full screen. 
There's a lot of tracks that do testing. There's not a lot of areas where the R&D is happening that leads to the testing. So when we think about what's here, we're not just thinking about cars. We're thinking about military vehicles. We're thinking about first responders that are helping to uh, bring somebody to safety. We're thinking about last mile shuttle services that we can capture the imagination of the public. If you're looking at testing what's coming, that's why you come to AreaX.O. AreaX.O is future ready. AreaX.O operates one of the most advanced communication test infrastructures in the world. Companies in numerous sectors, including smart farming, have access to our GPS systems, 4G LTE, Wi-Fi, LoRaWAN, TV white space, 5G, including millimeter wave, and satellite communication systems. The potential for the Ottawa Area X.0 site is endless, as are smart cities. We are just at the infancy of smart cities. This is just the beginning. I know we're looking at bringing in you know, trains and rail stations, uh, building a tunnel here. So they're really looking to the future to understand what does a city need to evolve and how can they make that happen here on site. I think the objective for a site like this is to provide a platform where you can test and validate your solution in a, in a contained and controlled environment. Here at AreaX.0, there's a huge array of capabilities and solutions. And one of the biggest challenges we see was how do we get that out to the community? How do we bring in the broader innovation centers across Ontario and Canada? And so with the development of the mobile AreaX.0 command center, we can start to do that. We can bring the capabilities right into the local community and start working with small and medium businesses there to bring new solutions that address their local needs. We work with the hardware companies, all the big names, the silicon vendors that you can think of, and then we empower these systems. So we're sort of that software foundation that again has to be safe, secure, reliable, 100% of the time. AreaX.O is the futureplex of innovation and collaboration anchored right here in Ottawa, Canada's capital. We enable and accelerate the safe and secure development, testing and application of future technologies. And we're founded on some of the greatest differentiators, expertise and capabilities that Ottawa has to offer the world. As a global tech hub, we have the highest concentration of technology talent per capita in all of North America. Some of our internationally recognized strengths include cybersecurity and telecommunications. 90% of the telecom industry-led R&D that takes place in all of Canada happens right here in Ottawa. We bring all of these capabilities to bear with our industry partners here at AreaX.O. Being in an area that is uh, snowy and the climate is challenging has really uh, been beneficial in, in creating surprises of new technology and how we develop that. That's been quite amazing. For us, coming, coming to this site allows us to do testing in a much more cost-effective way. There are a number of large companies here we can potentially work with to gain a foothold in different industries. And there are a number of smaller innovative companies as well. It's a very collaborative environment. And not only are we being able to talk with people on site, the various companies that are you know, here right now with this, within this footprint, but we're working together on projects to bring across North America to showcase not just our company's technology, but collaborative technologies at work. To have an opportunity to collaborate with such a great organization as Invest Ottawa at their Area X.0 site is just fantastic. We're there at the beginning, we get to learn with them, we get to learn with their other partners and collaborators. It's phenomenal. I love innovation, I love technology, and I think that this site is really a model for us being able to have great technology come together. And then I think Ottawa can be a leader in this space um, towards Canada and towards uh, the world. You've got really all of the, um, the ingredients of a triple helix model. You've got government, academia, and industry together. And that to me is exciting. That, that's, that's really why I think the future is very bright with Area X Auto. And so with that, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity and uh, turn it back over to you, Ravi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Omar. Unfortunately, there was no sound. So oh. maybe if um, can someone write in the chat the, the link because I think it's on a YouTube, right? Video? Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much, well, Omar. I, I will share you the big one. Thank you. Thank you.